Hello and welcome back. This is Mandal Zadav from SIT COE and today again we are going to deal with the mechatronics and today's point which is to be discussed is different pressure sensors. So the objective of today's lecture is to study different pressure sensors and outcome will be the student will be able to explain different pressure sensors. So types of pressure sensors which we are going to study today are Borden tube, bellows, dry farm, uh, electrical pressure transducers, strain gauges, variable capacitance type pressure transducers and LPTT. So we will go uh, through these one by one, uh, very first that is uh, Borden tube. So this is the picture of a Borden tube pressure gauge here. We know we are having a, a oval shaped tube uh, which is having one end fixed and the other end is movable and at the fixed end uh, we are going to see here uh, my pointer uh, at the fixed end we are going to apply the pressure and this tube uh, which is having movable end at the other side uh, it is linked with some link and that link is connected to a sector which is again meshing with the pinion and the pinion is connected with the pointer and there is a scale uh, so as there is pressure applied at this fixed end what is going to happen is this border tube which is oval shaped tube uh, is going to uh, it, it will try to expand and the movable end of the tube will try to uh, or rather uh, tube is bent in circular shape the movable end will try to be straightened and because of that uh, here arrow mark is shown the link will uh, travel through uh, this path and because of that again this uh, sector is pivoted at one point and because of that what is going to happen is as this link is going to move in this direction the sector will rotate in uh, circular direction and because of that this pinion is going to rotate and then because of that the pointer is going to rotate. So this is regular Borden tube pressure gauge. Uh, we can see this gauge at number of uh, different applications are available. Uh, so basically what happens here is the pressure applied is converted to a displacement and because of that uh, here we sense what is the pressure again on this this scale uh, different scales will be provided by using which we can measure what is the pressure so basically this is Borden tube pressure gauge the next one is bellows again the working principle is same as Borden tube only the difference is instead of Borden tube here we are going to use bellows so here this is the cross section of the figure here this uh, zigzag shape you can see it is a part of the bellows so bellows is again uh, uh, compressible structure of a metal and here see how this bellows work now again what we are going to do is we are going to apply pressure at this point because of that what is going to happen this bellows is going to get compressed and then because of that this uh, connecting link which is again connected to a sector and sector is again connected to a small pinion gear and the pin, uh, pointer is connected or attached to that pinion gear so as this connecting link is going to move upward direction because we are going to apply pressure from the bottom of this bellows so once this link gets uh, in upward direction what is going to happen as here again this at this point the sector is pivoted so sector is going to move in circular direction in the downward direction because of that this pinion which is again uh, in meshing with this uh, sector is going to rotate in clockwise direction which will rotate the pointer in clockwise direction or vice versa okay this main spring is connected to again this pointer which will bring back pointer at initial position once the pressure is removed from this point so this is the working of the bolo again here also one spring is provided uh, it is again doing the same work it will uh, uh, when once the pressure is released uh, it will again come back to its normal position by expanding the bellows so this is the working principle of 
the bellows again here uh, same case pressure is converted to a displacement and because of that we are going to get reading so this is bellows type pressure gauge the third one is diaphragm again working principle is same see here when we are going to apply the pressure at the bottom side this is the diaphragm it is again made up of a stiff metal and as we are going to apply the pressure this diaphragm is going to deflect and it will create a dome shaped structure uh, depending upon the pressure and again this uh, link will move in upward direction which is again connected to uh, rack and pinion arrangement here and it will rotate the pinion and accordingly uh, pointer connected to pinion is again going to rotate on a circular scale we are going to get what is the pressure. So here uh, they have <coughs> explained here the figure when pressure increases at the bottom of the diaphragm it gets expanded in upward side expansion of diaphragm move the stem upward in this uh, and the pointer which is again connected to a gear will move so this is diaphragm so basically uh, first three that is Bourdon tube gauge then bellows and diaphragm all will work on the same working principle that when we are going to apply the pressure what is going to happen is there will be displacement of uh, some uh, displacement at some point in the gauge and because of that the pointer will move on circular scale so we are going to get idea regarding what will be the pressure at where we are going to measure it the next is the electrical pressure transducers here basically what we are going to do is we are going to go through a piezoelectric uh, pressure transducer in figure we have we are going to see this well, there is one piezoelectric material which is again uh, combined with uh, two electrodes at its two ends and as we are going to apply the force the piezoelectric material is going to get deformed and because of that what is going to happen is it will create or it will produce some voltage in the circuit so here see construction so electrodes are at the two ends of the piezoelectric material and those are connected through these wires to the uh, so, uh, circuit and we are going to get output voltage here at this point E0 dimensions of these electrode plates are given and the actually uh, thickness of this material is given and after applying the force the change in thickness is also available to us so t delta t are these dimensions so basically piezoelectric material is such material material when we are going to apply the force on the material it will produce some electrical out output uh, major times it is a, uh, some amount of voltage is generated very small amount of voltage is generated and we can measure that or rather it will be proportional to the applied force so once we are going to get output we can measure force or uh, we can call it as a pressure also so we are going to apply force here on the one face of the uh, piezoelectric material and it is going to get deformed and at that at the same time it is going to generate some voltage so basically this is the working principle of electrical uh, piezoelectric pressure transducer the next one is strain gauge type again uh, firstly we will go through the strain gauge and then we will go through the strain gauge uh, pressure transducer so this is the construction of a strain gauge it is a very small and very uh, small thickness and very small size sensor is available so it has two terminals and a wire is wound in between those two terminals so you can see here so this is very uh, the size of uh, this sensor uh, we can say it will be on the uh, we ca it can be uh, fixed at fingertip also that is very small size and it is always connected uh, in a Vistone bridge here it is a quarter bridge strain gauge circuit is shown so one of the resistance from the Vistone bridge is replaced by this strain gauge and when there is a force applied over this strain gauge the resistance of this wire is going to change as the dimensions of this wire is going to change so it is very uh, accuracy is high but it is uh, again uh, very prone to damage so we need to uh, mount it very carefully so that it will, won't get damaged while installing so that it will give us 
good reading so you can see here it, it is a very small wafer of a insulating material on the on one side of this material uh, the metal foil is etched so again these dimensions of this uh, metal foil are also very small and we can directly attach this material on the surface from where we are going to measure the force or um, pressure okay so this is regarding the strain gauge now strain gauge type pressure transducer see here the strain gauge is applied over diaphragm type uh, pressure sensor again uh, previously we have seen the diaphragm diaphragm term pressure sensor that was mechanical one because the uh, displacement was converted uh, in uh, circular motion through gearing and then it uh, scale was showing us the pressure here what is happen again we are having one diaphragm over which the strain gauge is now connected so this is the strain gauge we have seen the construction now only so what is going to happen here as we are going to apply the pressure this diaphragm is going to change its uh, shape or it will create such elongated surface because of the pressure applied from the bottom side so what is going to happen the dimensions uh, or rather the strain is going to get stretched and again it is connected to uh, quarter bridge circuit with stone bridge circuit here so it will produce some amount of voltage here so this is provided voltage that is supplied voltage that is v excitation and this is v out uh, because of the uh, strain uh, as we, here dimensions of the wire are going to change it will be producing some strain and that is converted through some electrical output that is some amount of voltage is going to generate and that we are going to measure so it will be again proportional to the whatever the pressure is applied so as we are going to apply the pressure here it will going to create some amount of voltage which will be proportional and thus we can measure the pressure by using strain gauge type pressure transducer the next one is variable capacitance type pressure transducer again the working principle will be same we have already gone through the capacitance uh, capacitive type uh, transducers so in that we have already discussed how a capacitor capacitive transducer is going to work uh, there are actually three different ways through which we can measure the uh, capacitive transducer that is one is uh, either we can change the overlap area surface area of these two plates so here this is the capacitor uh, capacitive type uh, transducer is shown uh, we can either change the overlap area between these two plates or the distance between two plates or the dielectric material between the plates so here what is going to happen is we are going to uh, use here the see here one on one side of the plate we are going to apply the reference pressure and on the other side of the plate we are going to apply the process pressure here we are going to measure the process pressure so here it is known pressure here it is unknown pressure as we are going to apply the pressure uh, the distance between two plates are going to change and that distance uh, change in distance will change the capacitance of the capacitor which is again to be uh, uh, is measured using the circuit and that uh, change in capacitance will be proportional to the uh, change in distance of these two plates so again the it will be again proportional to the process pressure so we can measure the process pressure by using this capacitance type pressure transducer then next uh, lvdt that is linear variable differential transformer that is the full form of the lvdt so basically how lvdt we are going to use to measure the pressure uh, that will come later firstly what is the working principle of lvdt so lvdt is again linear variable differential transformer here the construction of the lvdt is shown what we are having is we are having a core and uh, the motion of core will be in this direction x y c x direction we can say and the uh, construction is such that it has one primary coil and two secondary coils uh, one such that uh, the uh, secondary coils will be in series to one another and those are connected in series and what here uh, we are going to do is we are going to apply voltage to the primary of the uh, tra transformer so what is going to happen is uh, electromagnetic induction principle we know that so it will again produce voltage in the secondary of the 
uh, LVDT. So as we are going to apply the voltage to the primary, it will induce voltage in the secondary. And the voltage is generated in two secondary coils is such that it will cancel each other because the directions will be opposite to each other. Uh, so uh, let's say here uh, V0, uh, V0, uh, V0 is the output voltage which is difference of V1 voltage which is from coil 1 and V2 voltage which is from coil 2. So V1 and V2 are the voltages generated in secondary 1 and secondary 2. So V1 minus V2 will be V out and when the core is at the center position uh, so V1 will be equal to V2 and because of that the voltage will be 0. So it will uh, give us reading 0 on the monitor here this is AC supply and motion of the core is like this so when if core is moved from <coughs> its place center place what is going to happen if it is moved in v1 uh, in this direction upward uh, direction then the voltage generated in v1 will be more as the magnetic field will be strong here and because of that v1 will be more and v0 will be difference between v1 minus v2 v2 will be less so it will be some positive voltage if core is moved in downward direction what is going to happen v2 will be more and v1 will be less so v1 minus v2 the negative value will become so uh, we can say uh, upward motion is positive x direction downward motion is negative x direction okay so like this the lvdt works so here uh, lvdt measured times is used for displacement measurement here we can measure the displacement in positive x direction as well as negative x direction so same LVDT we are going to use for the measurement of pressure. See here, uh, circuit views again shown. This is the primary coil. We are going to apply uh, apply some uh, voltage, some voltage in primary. Because of that, what is going to happen? Uh, some magnetic field is going to be generated here, and because of that, again electromagnetic induction uh, voltage is generated in these two secondaries, which are again connected in series in such a way that uh, they are having. Uh, they will cancel each other okay so again in pressure transducer see here what is used here is a bordon to pressure gauge is used the displacement which was shown earlier with mechanical components here it is only shown in lvdt so lvdt type pressure transducer what happen is the movable end of the bordon tube this is the bordon tube we are going to apply the pressure here this is the fixed end of the bordon tube and this is movable end or rather free end which is connected to the core of the LVDT. So what is going to happen as we are going to apply the pressure, this tube will try to be straight and then this uh, cord which is again connected to core through pulley is going to get uh, displaced and the core will be moved in upward direction. So here it is the secondary winding, here primary winding we are going to up supply some voltage here at primary. So here some voltage is going to get generated and here it is output voltage. So as the core moves in upward or downward direction hmm, uh, which will be a proportional to the pressure applied, uh, some voltage will be generated and that voltage can be again proportional to the pressure applied. So such in such a way or in such a manner we can get uh, idea regarding the pressure through LVDT type of transducer. Okay. So these were few pressure sensors or transducers which can be used in uh, different applications where the pressure measurement is important. So basically we have seen the uh, basics of uh, pressure measuring here. Thank you.